Development and the long running Justice Department investigation into Hunter Biden. President Joe Biden's son. We've now learned the younger Biden has reached a tentative deal with federal prosecutors to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax offenses and enter a diversion program in relations to a felony weapons charge. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington. After a year's long investigation, Hunter Biden, President Joe Biden's sole surviving son, has reached a tentative agreement with the Justice Department. The deal calls for the younger Biden to plead guilty to misdemeanor tax offenses, and he's expected to reach an agreement with federal prosecutors on the felony charge of possessing a firearm as a drug user. Sources close to Hunter Biden believe that this will end the more than five year investigation that has dogged Hunter and his father. Investigators have been probing whether Hunter Biden paid adequate taxes on millions of dollars in income, including money he earned from overseas business dealings with China and Ukraine. In Ukraine, Hunter Biden served on the board of a natural gas firm from 2014 to 2019. From 2009 to 2017, while serving as vice president, Joe Biden was tasked by President Obama to oversee U.S. foreign policy in Ukraine. President Biden has said he's never spoken to his son about his foreign business dealings, adding that Hunter Biden, quote, has done nothing wrong. In an interview with ABC News in 2019, Hunter Biden defended his private ventures, echoing his father's statement that he did nothing wrong, but acknowledged he didn't anticipate the political impact on his father's career. I made a mistake in, um, in, in retrospect as it related to um, creating any um, perception that, that was wrong. The criminal probe was led by David Weiss, a U.S. attorney appointed by former President Trump. The White House responding with a statement saying the president and first lady love their son and support him as he continues to rebuild his life. But the Trump campaign is slamming the tentative agreement, calling it a sweetheart deal. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And we'll continue to keep you posted on these developments following today's plea deal. Stay connected with us on the WHAS 11 app and on our website. A man who police say trying to carjack two undercover officers in the Portland neighborhood is dead. Today, Kentucky State Police are piecing together exactly how it all happened. The shooting happened around 1.30 Monday afternoon near 22nd Street and Griffiths Avenue. A witness recorded a video before police arrived. You can take a look. She says the white car that's going to be on your screen right there is the undercover cop car. According to police, LMPD detectives were in that car watching a house for a separate investigation when around 1.30, someone approached the car and tried to carjack those officers. Interim Chief Jacqueline Gwynne Villarreal said one detective shot their gun in an effort to stop the armed suspect, and that man was taken to the hospital where he died. The individual is a white male in his 20s. The officer who fired his weapon is a 10-year veteran with LMPD. Kentucky State Police have now taken over this investigation, which is usually standard procedure for a police-involved shooting. A Bullock County paramedic remains in the ICU with critical injuries today after a semi crashed into an ambulance in downtown Louisville Monday. We're also learning about the patient being transported at the time of the crash. So this all happened earlier Monday morning. Kentucky State Police said three teenagers led Bullock County officers on a chase in a stolen car, which ended in a fiery crash. One of those teens was being rushed to a Louisville hospital in the back of that ambulance. It happened around 3.30. The ambulance was hit on East Chestnut Street in downtown Louisville by a semi coming off the Brook Street exit of 65. That impact caused a 60 year old paramedic to be thrown out of the vehicle. He's just dedicated his life to EMS and it was very somber. Uh, just everybody um, thinking and keeping keeping those injured uh, in their minds. The ambulance driver, a 32 year old EMT, was also treated for minor injuries and released from the hospital last night. A local business owner was killed in a boating accident on the Ohio River. It happened around midnight Saturday. Witnesses told police nearby boaters helped the victim identified as Orlando Gay get onto shore near the water tower off River Road and Zorn Avenue. Police believe he was hurt while on board the boat. Our Alexis Jones and photojournalist Ian Hardwit spoke to his family. For the last six years, Double Deuces has been a staple in the Russell neighborhood. People from all over traveled here not only for the good food and music, but for the owner, Orlando Gay. But they just called him Baby Ray. He made the place. 
You can come in here any day of the week and he would be here. Whether behind the bar or near the dance floor, the Russell legend was known for showing up in style. But underneath it all, William Gay says he was just a big brother. If you needed anything, all you had to do was give him a phone call and he'll, he, he'll do it. But Saturday morning, William says Orlando decided to take some time for himself. That's when he says his brother was injured on a fishing boat along River Road around 12 o'clock. Something flew out of the water and hit him. He was in shallow water. According to LNPD, Orlando received several injuries. Witnesses told officers nearby boaters helped him get to shore. He was then taken to U of L hospital where he later died. William says he rushed over as soon as he got a call. You need to get down to the hospital and not you know, what, what's going on? You need to get down here and you need to get down here now. So it was to let you know right away, it was pretty bad. He says the news of baby Ray passing is still fresh. Oh, it's just a regular night. And the thought of him not being around is painful for the entire community. They called him Uncle Ray. They'd ask, come by and ask him, you got any work for us, Uncle Ray? Can I, is there anything we can do for you? So he would invite him in and let him take out the garbage. Stuff like that. Though things will no longer be the same without him, William says the doors of Double Deuce will remain open and his legacy will live on forever. Alexis Jones, WHS 11, on your side. And as we wait for the official cause of death from the coroner, his family is organizing a balloon release set for this Thursday night at 6 o'clock. You can join them at that business, the Double Deuce at 26th and Broadway. Jeffersonville police are still searching for a woman suspected in a deadly hit and run involving her own granddaughter. Take a look at the photo there of Lisa Tesh. Police said surveillance video shows her running over the toddler at the Motel 6 Friday night. That was just off I-65 and Eastern Boulevard. This is the car that they believe Tesh is driving. It's a white Chevy Trailblazer with Kentucky plates. The plate number is A9Z280. Tesh is considered armed and dangerous, so if you do see her, you're urged to call 911 immediately. Louisville Metro Police are looking for a person who shot two people in the Russell neighborhood. Police say the men were shot near South 16th and West Market Streets around 8 o'clock last night. Both are expected to survive. Investigators are trying to find out if the two men knew each other. If you have any info, you're urged to call LMPD's tip line at 574. LMPD. And we are learning more about a couple killed in a motorcycle crash over in Newburgh on Friday. Michaela Logston, whose photos you're seeing right now, and Brandon Self died when police say they sped through a red light and hit an SUV. Michaela has a three year old son. Her friends tell us why this tragedy hits especially hard for the local motorcycle community. It's tough because she had asked me to go riding and I couldn't go. I think, could it have been all three of us? Or because I am a new rider, would they have held back because they would have never left me behind? So I have a lot of emotions about it. Um, I mean, it just is what it is, you know. Michaela and Brandon's friends are selling the motorcycle and car decals you see there on your screen to help raise money for their funeral expenses. If you'd like to purchase one, we have you linked up on our website, whas11.com. Bardstown and Nelson County fire crews have yet to determine what caused a horse trailer to catch fire on the Bluegrass Parkway yesterday. Employees for the hauling company told investigators they could only get four of the eight horses off that trailer in time. The four who died had an estimated worth of $750,000.